Namaste. Of the various backbending asanas, the kneeling ones are very strengthening. Yeah, for a simple reason. Yeah, there's less support. Yeah, so you need to engage the strength of your thighs. Yeah, the hips and the core for you to be able to curl back safely. Whereas, for example, if you're on your feet, yes, in the drop back, for example, if you're using the arms yeah, to pull your legs back, yeah, those are like supportive ways for us to open the spine. But in kneeling, you're left alone with the pure strength of your thighs, the hips, and the core. And of course, the breath. All right. And the Ustrasana is one gateway to attaining the deeper kneeling back bends in the future. Yeah, so for today, let me share with you yeah, some tips and insights on how you can you know, deepen your practice of the Campbell, the Ustrasana. All right, so let me just take this one off. So I'm practicing really nice and gritty. All right, that's important. Yes, so you need to really press over a gritty surface because you're gonna really press down through your knees. All right, knees are about hip width distance or slightly narrow because later on, yeah, as you curl your spine backwards, your hips will naturally scoop under and that will involuntarily allow your knees and the thighs to open lightly apart. So it's wise to start already with them narrow. Yeah, so you don't, yeah, um, over, yeah, scoop your tailbone and the, the pelvis under when you curl back later on. So that's the foundation. All right. So another foundation would be this. Yeah. So especially if you're learning it, yeah, to counter the hips from falling and to counter yeah, the knees from bending because in the Ushrasana, you're not bending at the knee so you can reach back. You can keep those knees down. Yeah, so the hips and the knees are aligned. Now that's the setup. You don't you swing back and then do this and then go forward. Now, so you need to really go into those deep foundational elements of the practice. And then the toes, yeah, while you're learning it, yeah, becomes uh, helpful yeah, in preventing your hips and your knees from yeah, bending backwards. All right, so arms lift high. You might lightly sway there. All right, so those are the foundational element. All right, the upper back. All right, in the practice of the Ostrasana and other kneeling back bends, you don't want your arms to be pulling downwards because that will yeah, tighten your spine even more. So what you wanna do uh, is to move the arm bones forward, this one, like your armpits wrap to the front and that will allow your shoulder blades to roll over like that and then under. Yeah, so in uh, the, the back bend, the Ushrasana, yeah, your arm bones will move upwards, backwards, and downwards to scoop yeah, the spine forward and upwards. And then you don't want to be fighting the shoulders down yeah, in an attempt to open your spine down. Uh, backwards, yeah. So you may, you want to move your arm bone up, yeah, back, under, and upwards, yeah. So the shoulder blades will have this uh, rotational action, external rotation, and it will slide under, upwards, to make room for the spine to move forward, upwards, and backwards. Like that, yeah. All right, yeah. So breathing in, you may move your elbows forward, and that will initiate the suspension of your arm bones back, and then the wrapping, yeah, or the rotation of your shoulder blades under your body, like this. All right. So in totality, in the breath, of course, yeah. Breathing in, exhale out. Inhalation, arm bones to the midline, up and back. Exhalation, inhale, repeat the process. Good, and then from there, you can let your hands fall, good, and then move your shoulders up to the ears, and then roll them backwards, downwards, and forward. Yeah, like that. Like a cushion for your spine. See? Backwards. 
under, forward, and upwards. Yeah, not downwards. Huh? So up, back, under, and upwards. And then there, the spine, which is how this face, the open, forward, upwards, and backwards. See, I'm not bending at the knees in an attempt to curl back. Rather, I'm going to keep my knees down and my pelvis you know, strong in the process. And I breathe through you know, my inner core you know, in creating and opening the spine to the back. And then the head, you know, once the spine is open, the head will naturally open up as well. And then the head is free, the neck is open, and then you can breathe easily into the position, yeah? And then to rise, pressing down, pull the lower belly in, inhale, 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 and then you might lightly fold the hips and walk the knees in place. And then you do your recovery positions, either you are flowing to a vinyasa, or my favorite, actually, as a preparation and as um, my way of flowing in between my back bends is the Matsya Kridasana, this flapping fish. And then just circle around the leg, yeah, and then fanning side to side, kicking and stretching, yeah, and then changing sides. And circle around. Good. And I might flow to this. A symmetrical one. Good. And a downward facing dog. Good. And after that, yeah, I might go for another round and progress to a deeper back bend as well. Yeah, so Strasana, pressing downwards. Yeah, pressing down. Draw the belly in, inhaling. Arm bones to the front, no. towards the back, and forward, upwards, and reach. Breathing in, no. and exhale out. Right. To come up, inhaling, come up, lower belly in, rise the spine up. And you can walk your knees in place. And you do your recovery techniques again. Good. Hope that one helps and good luck. Yeah, let me know.